Let's welcome now News Nation national security contributor Tracy Walder. Tracy, it's always great to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Kelly. I'm wonderful to have you. So I'd like to dig into the origins of these threats to the U.S. in just a minute. Uh, but let's begin with the overall logistics of deterrence. So based on your experience, Tracy, what are U.S. authorities doing right now to monitor these demonstrations and ensure safety in the future? That's an excellent question. Really, what it boils down to is a word that we like to use in the intelligence community called chatter. And really, they are looking and monitoring increase of chatter. Unfortunately, a lot of these individuals who participate in these protests utilize keywords. They don't just come out and say, you know, this is where we're going to hit next. This is how this is going to work. And this is the day we're going to do it. They are monitoring for those keywords and code words that they're looking for. They're monitoring, scouring social media, also talk apps like Signal, Zello, those kinds of things that people are using to communicate with, much like kind of how we saw folks communicating during January 6th. Makes sense. So I'd like to get to the threats overseas as well. I know they're not just domestic. However, extremist groups and bad faith actors in the U.S., as you know, Tracy, they're now attempting to take advantage of these tensions. So how vulnerable does this make the U.S. to these types of threats? I view this just quite simply as a massive national security threat. I think the two main actors that really we see here is Russia. Russia, in my opinion, has always sort of been the king of what we like to call psyops or psychological warfare. And they're very good at utilizing social media to do that and really galvanizing support. Because really, ultimately, what they want to do, I don't think they necessarily care about a rise in, in anti-Semitism and a rise in Islamophobia. They want to divert attention away from Ukraine. And this does that for them. Then you also have Al Qaeda and other terrorist groups who are really trying to further their ideological goals. And that's what we saw really with TikTok and bin Laden's letter going viral. They have no problems with that if that's what's galvanizing us to do that. And when we have this sort of rocky foundation um, amongst America, amongst politicians, and amongst policymaking, that really creates a, a large national security threat. Sure. So there is this question of foreign agents. You know, Russia stating their goal is to further destabilize the United States, a direct quote. So they're seeing this as an opportunity. What do we do to combat that? You know, I think one of the biggest things that we need to do, and I, I don't think people are going to like this answer, is, is is trying to stay off of social media, because the reality is, is that's where the seeds, in my opinion, are really being planted. We've seen what's happened with TikTok. Now, TikTok has been held accountable for what they're doing, and they are scrubbing um, some of that misinformation, but it's that misinformation that's really creating this explosion um, of wildfire and this explosion of hate, and that is ultimately what's going to create the next attack here in the United States. All right, an important topic. We'll stay on it. Tracy Walder, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.